Hi YouTube, this video is going to be about making Dr Finkelstein from Nightmare Before Christmas. So I'm using Milliput to do this. I'm just going to show you all the stages step by step. So I start off by rolling these two long sausages and I've got these um, tin lids and this is going to be for the wheels for his wheelchair. So that gave me the basic shape for the wheels just using those tins and I'll come back and I'll refine these later. Um, just going to wait now for these to harden and while that's happening um, I start making the actual chair so this is just mount board and I just cut some rectangle pieces and you can see I've just used milliput to go around the edges just to seal it all together next I made a couple of wheel hubs um, these are very simple and I'll sand them down later again to refine them it's just a basic shape for now then back to the main chair you can see what I've done here is I've just used a very thin layer of milliput to go over the whole thing. Again, this looks really rough at this stage, but it gives me the main shape and it makes it nice and strong. I will be using sandpaper to refine a lot of this and smooth it all off and also make it even thinner. Okay, then I made a block to go under the chair and I actually used a couple of Lego blocks inside here and then just covered it with milliput just to give me the start of a shape underneath the chair um, and then I just used some aluminium foil just squashed it to give me the main shape of Dr Finkelstein's body um, and I can position him in the chair just for scale just to check it's going to be the right sort of size and I think it is so this should work nicely quite often with this kind of model making it goes through a lot of rough stages and you just have to put up with that because you know it's going to end up getting better in the end. OK, back to the wheels. You can see here I've sanded them down and I've started adding spokes as well. Um, and I've just used a very small um, Dremel drill to drill holes. And then these are just cocktail sticks that I've just put through the holes um, down to meet the hubs in the middle. Um, and then once it's all done, what I'll do is I'll drill a hole right in the middle through the hub again um, so they rotate better. On the main chair I've done quite a bit of sanding as well at this stage and you can see I've added a tube and this is just for the axle to go through for the wheels to attach on. After rummaging about in the shed the only axle that I could find was actually quite a bit thinner than the hole in the tube but this will work fine as long as it's nice and strong uh, and I just want the wheels to be able to rotate. Okay, so back to the actual figure, what I've ended up doing here is just drill a hole through and then I've put wire through for the arms and it's two lots of wire twisted, that gives it much more support. You can see they're attached here. That, um, and then the legs, I've done the same thing, I've drilled a couple of holes and positioned a couple of legs in. These are obviously swinging about like mad at the moment but they'll all be solid and stuck um, eventually. It's obviously important for me to keep checking what it's going to look like in the actual chair. So I keep positioning him in here just to see, you know, roughly where his legs are going to come to and roughly where his arms are going to come to. And it's looking pretty good at this stage. I'm quite happy with how the main shape is going. OK, next you can see here I ended up um, making a head for him. Now the head was an aluminium ball, so I just got some aluminium foil and just really squashed it into a, a sort of a oval kind of ball shape. I also made this little wheel for the back of the um, chair and it's just got a tiny little rotating wheel on it and then yeah that'll just go to give it some support. At the moment it's propped on some cocktail sticks. Um, okay yeah this is the head. Like I say inside here is a whole load of aluminium foil and what that's going to allow me to do is I'll be able to saw the top of his head off and then pull all of the aluminium foil out of his head to give me a nice hollow head. So I have these really nice little tiny saws. Um, they're really useful for this kind of thing. Um, it's by Tamiya, the people that do all the radio control cars and that kind of thing. But you can see here, nice fine saw and yeah, really handy for this kind of detailed work. So you can see here, I've cut the top of his head off it's given me a nice smooth cut and inside here you can see all the aluminium foil all squashed up. So next I've got to pick all of that out 
um, which should be fun. But it'll be nice and hollow inside. That'll give me space for adding his brain. Okay, next I use some milliput just to attach the lower part of his head uh, to the rest of the body. Nice and secure. And you can see it's all hollowed out, ready for a brain to go in there. Lots of space. All the aluminium's gone. Uh, and I'll show you the top of the head as well. Here it is. Uh, so again, it's hollow. It's quite a bit thinner though. This is just going to be the top. And hopefully I'll have a hinge on the top as well at some point so that you can um, open and close his head and take his brain in and out. Okay, back to the chair. You can see I've added like little handles on here. I've done kind of padding at the front so it looks like little um, bits of leather. It's got leather sides and then you've got sort of stitching and things going down the sides as well. So a few little details there. Um, on the actual figure, you can see I've done a sort of wrap around bit for his lab coat. Um, a sort of roll bottom to the lab coat as well. And then I've done these kind of forehead lines. Uh, and it's a start, you know, there's a long way to go, obviously, but it's starting to kind of take shape a lot more now, I think. And I'm kind of pleased with how it's going at this stage. I know it's always tempting to do the head first, but I quite like to leave that until the end. Make sure I'm happy with everything else first, and then that's the last thing that I like to do. Like this, like as soon as I added his mouth, it really started looking more like him, and I was much more pleased with the whole kind of sculpt. Um, you can see here as well, I've added his gloves, which were just basically long cones, um, pushed down onto the wire, and then tiny little hands added. And I've kind of positioned his hands as if he's kind of, um, you know, sort of rubbing his hands together with glee, <laughs> um, just for a sort of an extra evil look. Um, I've made a sort of rough brain shape here as well. Okay, lots more detail added to the chair. You can see I've put rivets on the wheels um, and I've also done very thin rims around both wheels and that was quite hard to do. I had to roll really, really thin kind of sausages and milliput and then flatten them and then cut them so they were nice and kind of square. More leather effects to the back of the chair there as well. Um, and you can see underneath the chair um, I've continued and made that sort of uh, rounded kind of box shape underneath the chair. Um, lots of kind of extra little bits here and there as well. This is all going to add detail when we come to paint it. And the other thing is, I haven't sanded it completely smooth everywhere because when you come to paint it, I want it to look kind of aged. So all those kind of little rough kind of pop marks and textures are all going to add to it, I think, in the end. Okay, with the figure, you can see here he's coming on. Um, done some little bags under his eyes, put his ears on. Um, and he's looking, yeah, he's looking nice. I'm, I'm very pleased with him. Um, I've got to do his glasses as well. I've made like the start of his glasses, but obviously he needs to have very thin wires and things added to it. And I'll probably do that actually after I've painted him because it's going to be so fiddly. Here's his brain. That was just a case of um, rolling lots of thin sausages and just, yeah, making them into spirals and then adding them on. Uh, and I think that's worked really well. Here's the top of his head again. Um, with the top of his head, you can see I've added these little, um, I don't know what they are, like bolts, I guess, sort of like Frankenstein type, um, <laughs> or sort of rivets to keep his head on. But uh, yeah, that's looking nice. So I'm, I'm pleased with that as well. Okay, just to give you an idea of what the glasses are gonna look like, I'll just hold them up so you can see. I mean, they're absolutely tiny. Um, so I just made two little tiny discs and a little support part in the middle. But yeah, they're absolutely minute. It's pretty fiddly making those. Okay, the first painting stage. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but he's white. Why have you painted him blue? But this is just my base colour and I want to have hints of other colours coming through. Um, so this will be, in all of the little grooves and things, you'll have little hints of this pale blue coming through. And that should look quite nice, I think. Okay, here's with the second stage. What I've done is dry brushed a load of white over the top. So now he's starting to look white overall, but can you see the little hints of blue in there? I think that's gonna look really nice and kind of extra creepy um, in the end. I will need to add some other like hints of colors into this as well, but I think this is gonna be the overall kind of look. 
So when you're dry brushing, you just get some paint on your brush and then dab most of it off onto a bit of kitchen paper so your brush is almost dry and then you just start brushing over the whole thing and you can see it, it leaves all those kind of little corners and little hollow bits with a darker colour. Okay, I'd actually run out of black acrylic paint so what I did was I just mixed really really dark green with a really dark red and it's given me this colour which is very dark but it's not um, it's not black but I think that might actually help in the long run so you can see how I've done the inside of his mouth his gloves a um, little bit at the base of his coat his shoes um, the brain I painted all this color as well initially and then I've gone in with a bit of dry brush the sort of light brown color over the top and then you've got the the head there which I did the same as uh, the rest of him to match it glasses I've done black and then the chair I mean it's not black but you know what I mean very 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 dark brown done that just as a coat over everything to start with um, and then I'll dry brush over the top of this as well to bring out all the details okay this is how he's ended up turning out so I'm really pleased with the overall look of this I think it's really like him and I'm glad I put so much kind of effort into getting the shape of his face right because I think that's what's made it. So with the wheelchair, what I've ended up doing is dry brushing silver over the top of that really dark colour which was sort of almost black but not quite. It's like a really, really dark brown. And I think what that's done is it's given this kind of effect of kind of raw iron or something like that, like really um, old looking iron. You can see in the brain here I've uh, added some kind of dry brush over the top and I've also put some kind of pinks and things into this. It's quite hard to see in this video, but it's quite pinkish looking in real life. So I think that's made a difference. It's actually the same kind of magenta pink that I've used inside his mouth and inside his ears. So I think that kind of uh, ties in nicely. You can see on his glasses I've added little tiny wires which was really fiddly painting those black as well um, but it's made all the difference and I've painted on some eyebrows as well just with some thin sort of dark lines here's the top of his head I'm still thinking about putting a hinge on here so that uh, you can open and close his head and take his brain in and out <laughs> I think that would be a nice touch um, okay also like on his body as well as the blue and then the sort of dry brushing of the white I've actually really watered down some kind of yellow ochre colors like so it was really wet and I've just added that onto his body as well so that gives little hints here and there of a sort of a yellowish brown color so it kind of looks like slightly stained as well um, here you can see like all of these sort of pitting in this uh, wheelchair so I'm really glad that I didn't smooth all this in too much like I really could have sanded it back and made it as smooth as possible but all those little kind of pits and things they are what gives it all the detail really and just makes it look really kind of like aged metal I don't think I've ever made anything before that's looked quite as like real metal as this does okay I hope you can all see what I mean by how you have to go through a lot of rough stages before you end up with something that looks more refined I think it's just a battle that all of us model makers kind of have to go through but it's totally worth it in the end okay I hope you've enjoyed this video please check out my other sculpting videos and hit subscribe if you want to see anything that I make in the future thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video